Where is heaven? Where is heaven? So I'm going to limit myself tonight, though there's a lot we'd like to say about heaven, but tonight I want to show you from God's Word where heaven is. Now open your Bible to John chapter 14. Open your Bible to John chapter 14. We're going to be reading just a few verses there, then we're going back to the Old Testament. Now I said to a man one time, uh, we were talking about heaven, you know, but he said, why, West Virginia's almost heaven. And I said, friend, if you think West Virginia's almost heaven, you don't know much about heaven. <laughs> and I'm a West Virginian, too. That's right, I'm a, I'm a West Virginian, born West Virginia, and just even, oh, I just, it just grieves me every time I cross the state line. <laughs> yeah, I just hate to leave West Virginia. That's right. I have to go up there and preach to them Buckeyes. Every time I go up there, them Buckeyes pick on me something terrible. Yeah, one guy said to me, he said, do you know where a West Virginian keeps his automobile? No, I said, no, where? He said, in the backyard on four cinder blocks. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean to tell you, Brother Hill, they just laid into me up something terrible up there, you know. But I finally got them. This one guy up there that picks on me all the time, I found this out, and I went up there one time, and I said, hey, are you a Buckeye? He said, yep, I'm a Buckeye. I said, I looked it up in the dictionary, and guess what it said? A Buckeye's a worthless nut. <laughs> I don't know why they haven't invited me back lately. <laughs> okay, my, you look so good when you smile, and you look so mean when you don't. Now, keep smiling. I'll, I'll try to preach God's word to you. Now, where is heaven? Herb, you say, Herb, can we actually find out from God's word exactly where heaven is? I want to show you tonight exactly where where heaven is. Now in John chapter 14, beginning there at verse 3, you remember now Jesus is here on earth. He's talking to his disciples. It's not going to be long till he goes to Calvary, voluntarily and willingly lay down his life for the redemption of mankind. He's going to Calvary and he's comforting his disciples. He kept telling them, I'm going to, I'm going to be leaving you. I'm going to be going away. Now listen, in John chapter 14 and verse 3, Jesus says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. See, he's trying to comfort them. I'm coming back. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Now look at the next verse. And whither I go, ye know, and the way you know. Now, I want to stop right here. Jesus said to his disciples, and whither I go. Now, what does the word whither mean? It's the same word for where. And so Jesus is actually saying, and where I go, you know. You know, I read that one day and I thought, well, that's a strange statement. Here are these disciples. And Jesus said, where I'm going, you know. And I said to myself, why, all they had is the Old Testament. You see, when this was spoken, the New Testament hadn't been written yet. And I said to myself, why, if Jesus told these disciples that where he goes, that whether he's, wh he said, whether I go, you know, and the way you know. In other words, you know where I'm going and you know how to get there. That's what he said to them. And so I said to myself, somewhere in the 39 books of the Old Testament, it must tell us where heaven is. And so I begin to search the scriptures. I want to show you tonight from the Old Testament and also from the New exactly where heaven is. Now turn back to the oldest book in the Bible. Now what is the oldest book in the Bible? The oldest book in the Bible is the book of Job. And while you're turning back to the book of Job, I want you to turn to the book of Job and turn to chapter 11. Job chapter 11. And while you're turning, let me remind you that the Bible is not put together uh, chronologically. That is, according to when the books were written. The Bible's put together logically, not chronologically. Okay? In other words, if the Bible was put together chronologically, Job would be the first book in the Bible. But it's not the first book in the Bible. But it's the first book that was ever inspired of God to be written. Now, Job, if you would, look at chapter 11 and look at verse 8. It is as high as heaven. What canst thou do? 
deeper than hell. What canst thou know? Now notice, it is as high as heaven. In contrast, it is deeper than hell. Notice, hell is referred to as being deep. We preached on that subject last night. Now tonight, where is heaven? It is as high as heaven. So this verse tells us that heaven is high. Now, turn with me to Job chapter 22. Just over a few pages to Job chapter 22, and look at verse 12. In Job 22, verse 12, is not God in the height of heaven? Here it is, the height of heaven. And behold the height of the stars, how high they are. Now, the, the stars is referring to the planetary heavens, and we know those stars are very high. Now, watch this. And thou sayest, how doth God know? Can he judge through the dark cloud? Thick clouds are a covering to him that he seeth not, and he walketh in the circuit of heaven. Here again, this passage tells us about the height of the stars. It tells us about the dark clouds, the thick clouds. It tells us about the height of heaven. Now keep these thoughts in mind and turn to the most astounding verse you'll ever read in God's Word. At least, in my opinion, it is. Turn, turn to Job 26. Job chapter 26 and look at verse 7. Job 26 and verse 7 says, He stretcheth out the north over the empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. Fantastic. Fantastic. Think of what this verse is saying. He stretcheth out the north over the empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. Now I want you to think of that last phrase. He hangeth the earth upon nothing. I tell people I can't even hang my coat up without a coat hanger and a nail to put it on. I can't hang something on nothing, but God did. He hung this earth upon nothing and it's still hanging. A lot of times when I'm talking to people about getting saved, I tell them this. I say, you ought to get saved because you're hanging on nothing right now. <laughs> that ought to shake them up a little bit, shouldn't it? I mean, this earth is hanging on nothing. He stretcheth out the north over the empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing, and it's still hanging there. Now, notice this little phrase, he stretcheth out the north over the empty place. You say, Herb, what's that mean? Well, let me tell you something. There was a time when scientific-minded people, you know, scientifically-minded people who, de who, who denied the Word of God and doubted the Word of God, many years ago, scientists used to read this verse and laugh at it. But you know what? They ain't laughing anymore. You know why? Because when man used to look into the heavens, they saw no empty place in the north. But when man built bigger and better telescopes, you can train them into the north, and my friend, there's an empty place there. Well, lo and behold, man finally caught up with the Word of God. <laughs> this Bible is so far ahead of man that it's, it, it's really funny. It really is. But when man built bigger and better telescopes, they trained them directly north, and there is an empty place in the north. And how did Job know about it? He didn't go down to Sears and Roebuck and buy him a telescope and scan the heavens. No, he didn't do that. Listen, he had the telescope of God's Word. And listen to me tonight. Through this Word, you can see a lot farther than man can see. Through this Word, you can see a lot clearer than man can see. And my friend, Job had the telescope of God's Word, and he said in this passage, he stretcheth out the north over the empty place, and there is an empty place in the north. Now, let's look at the earth again. He hangeth the earth upon nothing. Do you realize right now, and I want you to get this picture, that the earth is round. Some people say it's just a little bit egg-shaped. But think of this earth on which we're riding tonight. The earth is 24,000 miles around, and God hung it upon nothing. Think how much this earth must weigh. And yet God created it, and hung it upon nothing, and it's 24,000 miles around. You see, not only is it 24,000 miles around, but it's spinning like a top. You know how fast it's spinning? 24,000 miles an hour. Not 25,000, 
and not 23,000, but exactly 24,000 miles an hour. That's why every 24 hours is one day. Every time the earth makes a complete rotation, it's one day. So if you travel 1,000 miles an hour for 24 hours, you'll go 24,000 miles. So the earth is spinning 24,000 miles, uh, it goes 24,000 miles every 24 hours. So the earth is spinning and it's hanging on nothing. And not only that, now get this picture, not only is the earth spinning, hanging on nothing, but it is moving through space at about 18 miles per second. You say, where's it going? It's moving in its orbit around the sun. Just like if this was the sun, if this speaker was the sun, and here's the earth, it's moving in its orbit around the sun in our solar system, and the sun is the center of our solar system, and it takes 365 days for the earth to make one rotation around the sun, and that's a year. Every time the earth makes one revolution, that's a day, and every time it goes around the sun, one complete orbit, that's 365 days approximately, and it measures one year. Do you see that? Just think, it's moving at 18 miles per second. Do you realize right now we're moving through space at better than 70,000 miles per hour? Listen. We went from Racine to Leon. <laughs> Think of that. You say, man, that's fast. That's right. But by the time I snapped my fingers five times, we went from Racine and Boone County to Leon and Mason County. And man, that's fast. You say, Herb, then just think how many thousands of miles we've traveled just since we started this fellowship at 7 o'clock. Think of that. Fantastic. Listen, man ain't got nothing fast. Did you know that? Even that space shuttle's like a Model T Ford when it comes to God's, God's building. You know that? Man ain't got anything fast. They just think it's fast. That's right. They just think it's fast. It's not fast. Think of that. Here's the earth now, hanging on nothing, spinning 24,000 miles, uh, spinning 1,000 miles an hour, making one complete rotation every 24 hours, and moving through space in its orbit around the sun, the center of our solar system, at approximately 18 miles per second. And it's all hanging on nothing. Now, keep that picture in mind. Now, do you know where the North Star is? Most of you probably do. You can go out on any night on a real good clear night and locate the North Star. It's very easy. The way to do it is to find out where the Big Dipper is. Now, the Big Dipper is a series of stars. It has three stars in the handle, and then there's four stars down here in the Dipper part. It just looks like a Big Dipper up there, so we call it the Big Dipper. Now, if you'll, look at the, if you'll find the Big Dipper, and there's three stars in the handle, then the, the, the four stars that makes up the Dipper part here, those last two stars in the Dipper, those bottom stars in the Dipper, those are your pointer stars. And if you look at that and double it in your mind five times, it'll put you right on the North Star. Exactly, right on the North Star. Those are called your pointer stars at the bottom of the Big Dipper, and it puts you right on the North Star. Now you say, is this important, Herb? Yes, it's important. I'm going to show you something. Now, that's the North Star. Now, when you find the North Star, let's just say the North Star is right up here now, and this is the Earth. This is the Earth. Do you know that you could take, say I could hold the earth right here like a ball in my hand, you can take a, a stick, and if you would shove the north, if you'd shove that stick right through the earth, starting right at the south pole and coming out at the north pole, if you would shove that stick right through the earth, from the south pole to the north pole, when it comes out of the north pole, that stick is pointing right straight at the north star. Now, that never changes. It never changes. And do you know that you can go out in your backyard and locate the North Star, and you can stand in one spot, and you can look exactly the same direction. When you see the North Star, you could stand there from now on and be looking right at the North Star. One fellow said, but Herb, them stars are moving around. Oh, my friend, those stars is not moving. We're doing the moving. 
At least that's what makes it look like they're moving down here. There, uh, in other words, we're the ones that's doing the moving. That North Star will stay right there. I often tell people in my backyard down at Leon, I've got a certain spot. And when I come in late at night and the stars are glistening, I always like to get in that one spot and just stand there and look right directly at the North Star. Then I know it well enough now to look at the North Star, then I, then I find out where the Big Dipper is. Sometimes the Big Dipper's up here, sometimes it's down here, sometimes it's over here. But it always, those last two bottom stars always go right back to the North Star. And you know what you can do? You can take a, you could take a piece of pipe and sight the North Star and get the North Star right in the center of that piece of pipe, maybe five foot long or whatever, however length you want it, and then put that on a pole and concrete it right there in your ground, right there in the ground so it would never move. And any night them stars is out, lay your eye on that iron pipe and you look right straight to the North Star. Now listen, he stretcheth out the north over the empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. Now keep these facts in mind because I want to tell you what that empty place is in the north. That empty place, I believe, is God's driveway. God's driveway to the city. It's there, it's an empty place, and it's for a purpose. He stretcheth out the north over the empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. Now keep this in mind and turn with me to the book of Psalms 48, verses 1 and 2. Psalm 48 and verses 1 and 2. In Psalm 48 and verses 1 and 2, listen to these words. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion, on the sides of the, do you see it? On the sides of the north, the city of the great king. You say, Herb, what are you trying to tell us? I'm trying to tell you people that heaven is directly north through that empty place. And my friend, when you go through that empty place, you come to the North Star, and just beyond that North Star is heaven. Listen again. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. Now, if you don't know this tonight, you need to find this out. Heaven is a city. Heaven is a city. And do you know that in the book of Revelation, it describes that city right down to the details? It's 1,500 miles long, it's 1,500 miles wide, and it's 1,500 miles high, and it's the city of God. Now listen, if you're saved, you're going to a city. I just love to tell people, I may be a country boy down here, but I'm going to be a city slicker up there. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> listen. The city of our God, now listen, in the mountain of his holiness, and look at the first part of verse 2, beautiful for situation. You say, Herb, what's that mean? I'm going to tell you. He's got the best seat in the house. He's got the best seat in the house. In other words, from God's throne, he can look over the whole universe, and he can see every person on planet Earth at a glance. Listen, beautiful for situation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Now there's that word north, directly north. Now, turn to Psalm 75 with me, please. Turn over a few pages to Psalm 75. I want to show you a very unusual passage of scripture here. In Psalm 75, the psalmist is speaking about promotion He's speaking about uh, various subjects in this psalm, but I want to begin reading at verse 4. In verse 4, Psalm 75, I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly, and to the wicked lift not up the horn. Lift not up your horn on high, speak not with a stiff neck. Now watch verse 6. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. Now what's left out? North. But is it left out? Look at the first part of the next verse. But God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. The word north is not used here. It's left out. 
But it's not really left out because God is put in the place of the north. Do you see that? For promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south, but God is the judge. Do you see that? And my friend, God's throne is in the heavens and God's throne is in that city that the psalmist is talking about. Now, I want you to turn to another passage, the book of Isaiah. Now, keep these things in mind. As we turn to the book of Isaiah, and here's a passage that every Christian ought to have marked. In Isaiah chapter 14, I want you to look at verse 12. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12. Isaiah says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Now, who's Lucifer? I want to explain something to you. Lucifer, here in this context, He's a mighty, angelic being. And do you know who, what happened to Lucifer? I'm going to show you in this passage. Lucifer rebelled against God and became Satan. Now remember, Satan is our enemy. And he's here on this planet right tonight. But Satan used to be Lucifer, a mighty archangel of God. Now watch this. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? Now watch verse 13, because here's where sin began in this universe. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Do you see it? Listen, people. If Satan knows where heaven is, don't you think it's about time you found out? He said, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Verse 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Now watch verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. And that means that Satan's going to the lake of fire. Lucifer said, I'm going to be like God. And God said, I'm going to put you in hell. I'm going to put you in the lake of fire. If you don't believe that's true, just go read in Revelation. And my friend, the Re book of Revelation tells us that Satan was cast into the lake of fire. Listen, Lucifer, Lucifer is the one who became Satan. You know, I hear a lot of people say, well, if, if the Lord doesn't like the devil, how come he created him? Listen, people, the Lord never created Satan. He created Lucifer who rebelled against God and became Satan. Just like I've heard this too, and you probably have too. If God doesn't like sinners, how come he created us sinners? Listen, people, God never created one sinner. He created Adam and Eve. And my friend, when Adam rebelled, man became a sinner. So God didn't make you a sinner. God created you in Adam. He created you perfect. And when Adam disobeyed God, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned in Adam. Now look at this text again. I want to show you something here. And by the way, Lucifer, guess what it means? The shining one. And Satan still has the ability to change himself into an angel of light. <clears throat> and he's subtle, and he's powerful. And my friend, let me tell you something. Satan is no match for you or for me. Did you know that? The only way you can ever defeat Satan is through faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only way. Now listen. I want you to notice the I wills that Satan said here. And they teach us something. Notice he said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will set also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the Most High. In other words, Satan, Lucifer said, I'm going to be like God. But you know what? Let me tell you something. Lucifer made one mistake. You say, what was it, preacher? The same mistake people are making right today. And I, my friend, if you're sitting here tonight and you're not saved, don't make the same mistake. Lucifer forgot one simple truth. He was a creature, not the creator. That's what he forgot. 
He said, well, I'm going to be like God. I'm going to sit on the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I'm going to be like God. My friend, God said, I'm going to put you in hell. He forgot that he was the creature, not the creator. And listen, don't sit here tonight and let the devil deceive you. Don't let him deceive you, friend. Listen, if you're lost and you die in your sins, you're going to go to hell. That's what this book says. And listen, you don't have to die in your sins because Jesus Christ shed his blood and paid your sin debt. You can be saved right here tonight. And so Lucifer rebelled and became Satan. And do you see the three? He says, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. That's the first heaven. Verse 13, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. There's the second heaven. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. There's your third heaven. You see, the first heaven is the atmospheric heaven that envelops the planet Earth. Then the second heaven is the planetary heavens, the realm of the stars and the planets. That's the secondary heaven, the second heaven. And then there's the third heaven, the abode of God. You say, Herb, where do you think heaven is? I believe heaven is directly north through that empty place that Job saw, and I believe that heaven is just beyond the North Star. I believe when we pass that North Star, we'll see the lights of home. We'll see the city. Now listen, that North Star is fantastic. Do you know from down here on earth, when we look at the North Star, it looks like one star. But you can put a telescope on the North Star and guess what you find? It's not one star, it's three stars. Down here it looks like one, but when you put a telescope on it, there's three stars. You say, Herb, wonder what that means. Well, not, not to take you long to figure that out. There is one God, but he eternally exists in three persons. He is the triune God, Father, Son, and and Holy Spirit. The North Star is three stars, but down here it looks like one. You say, Herb, you believe that's where heaven is? I believe it's directly north through that empty place beyond that North Star. And brother, when we pass that North Star, we'll see the lights of home. I believe that's where that city is. You say, Herb, you mean that city of God, 1,500 miles square, is hanging out there in space? You mean it's hanging on nothing? Well, if he can hang the earth down here on nothing, that wouldn't be much of a job to hang a, a little city 1,500 miles square up there on nothing. Yep, I believe she's on nothing up there. And if you'll study your Bible carefully, you'll find that the city of God is mobile. Did you ever notice how man tries to imitate God? Man builds mobile homes, but God builds mobile cities. Try that non precise. Yeah. God builds mobile cities. The city of God is mobile. I wish we had time to spend a little time on that tonight, but just remember, friend, I believe it's hanging out there in space beyond the North Star. That's the third heaven. The region of the clouds, that's the first heaven. It surrounds the earth. Then the planetary heavens, and then the third heaven, the abode of God. Now listen to these words. Lucifer said, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Now, I want to go to the New Testament, and I want to show you right from the Word of God that there definitely are three heavens, and I want to show you a wonderful passage in 2 Corinthians. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians now, and the Apostle Paul writing in his second letter to the church at Corinth, and I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and... I always say this passage would make a Presbyterian shout. <laughs> oh, you talk about an exciting passage. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and look at verse 2. Now, Paul is the author, and I believe Paul's talking about himself here, and listen to what he says. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. Paul says, I knew a man in Christ above or about 14 years ago. Now, notice the parenthesis. See that little half moon? That's a parenthesis. And he says, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. You see the little parenthesis? It ends there. That's important. 
He says, I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth such an one caught up to the third heaven. There it is. To the third heaven. You say, what's he talking about? Paul said he had an experience. And he said, I don't know whether God took me out of the body or whether God left me in the body. I don't know. But he said, God caught me up, or such a one, he says, was caught up to the third heaven. You say, where'd he go? He went to heaven. He went to the city. You say, you mean to tell me you believe that God took Paul up to the city? He sure did. Listen, Paul left this earth, and he went up through the atmospheric heaven. He went up through the planetary heavens, and he went beyond that north star. He went into the city of God. He went through that gate of pearl. He walked down that street of gold and walked up to the throne of God. He was caught up to the third heaven. And listen to the next verse. <clears throat> and I knew such a man, and here it is again, watch those parentheses, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. You say, Herb, what's that mean? Well, you see, you've got, you've got a spiritual body inside. There's a spiritual man inside of you. Your spirit and soul make up that inner man. You know the Bible speaks of the outer man and the inner man. This body is the outer man. The real you is in this body. You're the real spiritual you made up of, sold and, uh, of spirit and soul. That's the inner man. And you say, what do you think happened to Paul? He says, I don't know whether I was in the body or out of the body, but I was caught up to the third heaven. And look at verse 4. How that he was caught up into paradise. Now, I didn't have time to touch on this last night, but let me remind you something. If you were here last night and heard the message, you remember what Jesus told the thief on the cross, today thou shalt be with me in paradise? And I showed you that he went into the heart of the earth. Now, Paul was caught up to the third heaven, and he said, I was caught up into paradise. Remember, I tried to tell you last night that there was a change took place. When Christ ascended, he led captivity captive, and now paradise is in heaven. It's in the presence of the Lord. Do you see that? Paul said how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. You say, Herb, what do you think Paul's telling us here? Paul had an experience. And he says, I was caught up to the third heaven. And he said, I don't know whether I was in the body or out of the body. Listen, when you leave this body, my friend, you're more alive then than you are right now. Did you know that? You see, we think that when death comes, that ends everything. No, my friend. God can take you out of this body. He can put you back into this body. Now, maybe God took him out of the body, took him to glory, but we know he did. And Paul says, I don't know whether it's in the body or out of the body. That spiritual body is so real, Paul said, I didn't know whether it's still in the body or out of the body. Boy, everything was just fine. And he says, I was caught up to the third heaven. And guess what? He said, I heard unspeakable words. You know what he did? He had, an in he had an interview with Jesus Christ. And just think, the Lord said, Paul, I'm not through with you. I'm going to send you back down on the planet Earth. You've still got some ministering to do. My land. But you know what the Lord told him? Now, I'm going to tell you some things that you can't utter when you get back down on planet Earth. Just think, God found a man that could keep his mouth shut. <laughs> think of that. You know, I run into people, you know what they say to me? Some of them, they say, well, Herb, I'd like to serve the Lord. I'd like to teach a Sunday school class. I'd like to do this and do that, but, but, but I, I'm not a talker. I can't talk. I just can't say anything. Well, my friend, you may be the one God's looking for. God doesn't always use us blabbermouths. <laughs> He looks for people that can keep their mouth shut. And Paul said, I heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. What do you mean by that? He can't even tell them those words that he heard up in heaven. You know, when I found this passage and found, what, found out what Paul was, had experienced, what he's talking about here, you know what? I understood Paul's writings a whole lot better. Because in Philippians, Paul wrote these words. I have a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. I says to myself, how does Paul know it's far better? Well, he'd already been there. Yeah, already been there. Just like these people that go down to Florida. Then they call back to West Virginia and say, come on down, it's far better. They done been there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just tell them, stay down there. I'm staying in West Virginia. It's the best. 
Just tell them to stay. I'm going back to the hills. I've got to have some mountain water. I can't stand that salt water. Amen? Amen. But now listen. Paul said, I have a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better, because he'd already been there. And God sent him back down. Now you study this passage, friend, and you'll see that there are three heavens. He was caught up to the third heaven. He went through the atmospheric heaven. He left the atmospheric heaven that envelops this planet. He went through the planetary heavens. You say, which way did he go, Herb? I believe he went directly north. Now you say, Herb, where do you think heaven is? I believe heaven is directly north through that empty place that Job saw, and it's there. It's there, friend. There's a lot being written on this empty place in that north, in the, in the north. And I believe that heaven's directly north beyond the North Star. I believe that city's hanging in space out there. And so if you ever hear me say this, now you'll know what I'm talking about. When I say I'm northbound with the pedal down, you know what I'm talking about. I have a lot of fun with when I'm CB and out in the van, you know, when I'm traveling, when I'm going down the road and some nut gets on that CB and says, how about a northbound? I like to grab that speaker and say, bring it on, you got a northbound. He says, how's it look over your shoulder? I say, clean and green, bring it on, good buddy. Yeah. I don't care if I see 50 Smokies, I tell them to bring it on. Get them off the road, I can make better time. Yeah, hey man. <laughs> You say, Herb, you really believe that's where heaven is? Listen, Jesus said, and whither I go, you know. And all they had was the word of God. The 39 books of the Old Testament. Listen, people, heaven is directly north. You say, Herb, you really believe it? Don't I believe the word. I believe, that's, I believe that's the way I'm going. I believe it's so strong that if the Lord takes me out of here before the shout, I just want three words on my tombstone, that's all. You say, what is it? I just want these words, he went north. That's all. You say, preacher, you're going to do that. Well, no, I'm, I'm not going by death, I'm going by the shout. <laughs> Sorry about that. But listen to me. I'd love to do that on my, if, if I ever have to have a tombstone. I think I'll do it sometime. I can afford it to do it now, just for the fun of it. Can't you see some old boy coming through the cemetery reading the tombstones? And he looks at that one and says, he went north. Hey, Mom, come and look at this one. He knows which way he went. Yeah. <laughs> that ought to shake him up a little bit, shouldn't it, huh? Listen, the Bible says, absent from the body, present with the Lord and church. Listen to me tonight. Heaven is real. It's a city. And it's out yonder beyond the North Star. Directly north. Study the Word of God. There's other passages we could turn to tonight. But I think we've looked at enough to show us where heaven is. It's northbound. Now let me ask you a question. If you die tonight, do you know where you're going? Listen, if you think so or hope so or maybe so, get up here tonight and know so. Listen, there's only one way to go to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. There's no other way. You can't get there through church membership. You can't get there through water baptism. You can't get there through living a good life. All those things are fine in their proper place. Good works are fine in their proper place. But the only way you can go to heaven is through faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Someone put it this way. To be heaven bound, you've got to be heaven born. And my friend, I've got good news for you tonight. If you're sitting here tonight and you say, Herb, I'm not saved, but I want to be. Listen, you can get saved easy. It's easy to get saved. If anybody ever tells you it's hard to get saved, they're lying to you. Because Jesus Christ did the hard part. He suffered and bled and died for our sins. And the good news I've got for you tonight is simply this. Your sins have been paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ, and all you have to do to get saved is to see yourself as a guilty sinner and be willing to say, God, I'm sorry for my sins. Lord Jesus, come into my heart, and he'll do it. And he'll save your soul for time and eternity. And my friend, you can walk out of here tonight saying, praise God, I've got peace with God, and if this old ticker quits ticking, I'm checking out down here, but I know where I'm checking in. I'm going north. I'm going to the city of God. And friend, heaven is for real. Are you going? 
Are you going? Bow your hearts with me in prayer. With every head bowed and every eye closed, we're going to have a prayer together, and we're going to ask you to come to Christ. Dad, mother, boy, or girl, whoever you are here tonight, you say, Herb, I'm not saved, but I want to be. Well, listen, the good news is God wants to save you. Don't leave here tonight without Jesus. No matter who you are, what your age is, it makes no difference. God loves you. Jesus shed his blood on that cross and paid your sin debt. All you got to do is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn from your sins. That simply means to acknowledge that you're a sinner and be willing to say, God, I turn from my sins. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Do it tonight. Make sure of heaven. Our Father and our God, we're so thankful tonight for your word. We're so thankful that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Father, we pray that as we enter into this time of invitations that Christians will, Christians will pray. And we pray that your Holy Spirit will touch those that need to be saved here tonight. Lord, help them to walk down this aisle. Help them to not be afraid. Help them to come and trust Christ and be saved. We wait upon you, Father, and may your Spirit touch every heart right now and draw the lost to Jesus Christ and help Christians who are out of fellowship to come and pray and confess their sins and get back in fellowship. Lord, we wait upon you now. Bless this invitation. And we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand prayerfully for the invitation as our pastor comes to lead us? What number do you have, pastor? 174. Number 174. And as we stand and sing, 174, step out tonight on the very first verse, the very first word, say yes to Jesus Christ. Come and trust him, come and receive him, and be saved.